Hello, Paul Hamler here. Welcome back to Paul Hamler's YouTube channel. Today we're going to uh, address a subject that's been very troublesome to a lot of woodworking over the years and it has been written about and videos produced on it uh, in the hundreds. But we're going to do one that's going, we're going to take a little different approach and that is how to sharpen a V gouge for carving. Uh, the V gouge has historically been one of the most difficult chisels, carving tools for woodworkers and wood carvers to sharpen for a long time and uh, it baffled me for many years. Some days I could do it and some days I couldn't. Uh, sometimes I would grind away uh, one inch of a good chisel trying to get the process down. So the thought occurred to me one of the reasons I had difficulty early on, and a lot of woodworkers have difficulty sharpening this V-gouge chisel, is because you can't see what you're doing. And what I mean by that, uh, I, I always tell people to, to draw two lines on a piece of paper and write your name in cursive and stay within the lines. No problem. Now, draw the same two lines and try to write your name with your eyes closed. That is what you're facing when you're trying to sharpen the many facets involved in sharpening a V-gouge. The approach that I'm taking today is we're going to use a round uh, sanding disc and we'll go into a lot of detail on, on how you make these. But the sanding disc will enable you to sharpen the V-gouge by looking straight down on the, from the working end of the tool right straight down uh, the shaft. So as you're grinding, you can see what you're doing and where you need to apply pressure and where you need to back off to, to get the edge that you're shooting for. So with that said, uh, let's take a look at the, the V-gouge and we'll talk through the, the two sequences or the two processes we go through to sharpen this tool and, uh, and talk about how we're going to uh, sharpen one today. Okay, uh, before we get too involved here when talking about the geometry of the V2, let me point out that the process and the sequence we go through to sharpen this tool, although we're going to be using a round sanding disc uh, to sharpen the tool, the same sequence, the same process applies if you're using stone, regardless of whether it's a Arkansas, India, water stone, etc. The, uh, the only thing that's changed here, instead of using a stone, we're going to be using the, the round sanding disc. Uh, here's, a, here's a picture of one uh, that we'll be using, and we'll go into detail about how to build these things and where to, where to acquire. The, uh, the model here that I made for the V-gouge, a couple things I want to point out. This is what your V-gouge should look like when you do the first uh, of the roughing operations. We're going to divide this into roughing and finishing. And the roughing operation is, is basically laying out your geometry that, that's going to have to be sharpened and fine-tuned. And sometimes I refer to it as the, the 132nd operation because all the roughing that we do, we're going to leave a 132nd line that's going to be eliminated uh, and ground away in the finishing process which sometimes I refer to as removing the white line. Uh, this operation, uh, this picture here shows the end of the V-gouge after the first roughing operation has been done and that is to square off the, the two points. Think of the V-gouge as two straight chisels that come together at 90 degrees uh, 35 degrees, whatever your angle. Typically the manufacturers will will refer to the, the angle of the two based on the outside angle and the size is determined by the distance from the corner to the corner. So uh, the thing that you over, people overlook sometimes, even though it's like sharpening two individual chisels, there is a small radius on the inside of this most all V-gouges. 
the small radius is right in what I refer to as the apex here on the inside. Now, the uh, the roughing operation, the sequence that we go through, is I first grind what's going to be what I refer to as the heel or the skate. This is a part, just like on an engraving tool, when you plow down into the wood, in this case instead of metal, you go down so deep and you level off. And when you level off, the cutter is riding on this heel or this skate. And that will maintain a, a uniform depth of cut as you continue to push. So we will grind the, the skate profile or the beginning of the skate Normally it's 15 to 20 degrees. Now when you go to harder woods, you can increase this angle and give you a steeper approach to your harder woods. But 15 to 20 degrees for, for most everything we carve with is, is adequate. So what we'll do is we'll go in and we'll grind the, uh, the outline for the skate. The next operation in the roughing process is we will, we will grind both chisels. In this example here, I've only I've only shown one of them that's been ground. And uh, when you grind the chisels, as in all the roughing operations, what you do is you bring it up to the the shoulder of the of the facet that you're working on, and leave one thirty second uh, of material. In this case here, the black has been ground at 15 to 20 degrees. The What's been left is the red, right above the black uh, angle facet that's been ground. This red line, or this red section, 132nd, that we leave, this will be removed in the finishing operation, and uh, it will show up as, as you're grinding this as a, as a bright white line. And later on, I'll show examples of the sequence of what the metal looks like from the, the point where you, you uh, square it off to the point where you grind your, your rough grind until you take it all the way to the finishing grind. And our goal is, when we're doing the finishing operation, is to grind, carefully grind, until you eliminate this 132nd of material and bring that, that 15, 20 degree angle right up to the edge. And what will happen and what's so uh, neat about using the sanding this as you're grinding this, you're looking right straight down. And you can see that in this case here, the red, which will be your white line on the, on the chisel, you can just see it diminishing and going away. In the control, because you're monitoring it as you're cutting and grinding, is a lot more controllable than using a stone, where you have to stop periodically, look and see how much further you got to go, put it back down, start pushing it across the stone again. My contention is, anytime you lift it up and, and put it back down, there's room for error to be injected. So you're not always going to set it down at the same angle that you started with. So with that said, again, in the roughing operation, we'll square it off 90 degrees. We'll do the two chisels. Uh, in this case here, we've done the, uh, the left-handed side. We'll, it doesn't matter what sequence you do, but do your roughing grind on the two chisels after you finish the roughing grind on laying out the 15-20 degree uh, heel angle. So once you, uh, once you do that, then we, you proceed into the what I refer to as the sharpening or the white line elimination of the finishing uh, grind. And the way we approach it is we'll, we'll take it, the two chisels, the right side, left side, again, makes no difference. Pick up the angle that you roughed it out in and continue grinding until you, and you watch and monitor that white line go away until it disappears. So as you're looking straight down on any type of uh, cutting edge tool, whether it's a, a chisel, a gouge, or a V-gouge, or whatever, when you're looking straight down at the cutting edge, uh, if you see uh, any little white spot or 
reflection on that edge that is not good you should be able to look at the cutting edge and all you should see is just basically nothing and uh, that's what we're trying to accomplish in this sharpening operation here so in the finishing operation we will bring this guy up eliminate the white line go to the other side do the same thing the last operation or the next grinding operation in the in the finishing sequence is to work on the heel now the heel because we laid it out uh, with the with the initial grind it's going to be shaped fairly big we want this heel or skate to be straight and narrow so what we'll do is we'll start sharpening because there's an inside radius on the inside of the v-gouge we will start sharpening the outside uh, and i refer to this uh, as the apex so what we'll do is we'll start sharpening the outside of the apex treating it just like a miniature gouge and try to match the radius of the inside of the of the v-gouge so again sharpening a, a small gouge uh, if you were doing it on a stone you would start off vertical and you would rock it right to left In this case we're going to be using the sanding disc uh, you you move the sanding disc around from the flat to try and sculpt that metal to match the inside radius same rule applies as you get really close you're going to see that a little white line associated with that area of the geometry it's going to get smaller and smaller the goal is is just like you did when you were sharpening the, the two side chisels is get it to completely go away the next step in, if you were sharpening with stones you would use a slip stone to go inside and, uh, and take any uh, burrs that were created off of the uh, inside flats of the gouge what we're going to do in this case we're going to use a silicon wheel that's the same diameter as our uh, sanding disc and it's a polishing wheel and very lightly go into and address the two sides to remove any burrs and then we're going to sculpt the edge of that silicon uh, polishing wheel we're going to sculpt it by dressing it with a piece of sandpaper so that the edge matches the inside radius of the, the v gouge that we're sharpening and then very lightly go in there and you could touch this thing off right at the apex right at the inside radius once you've done that you should not see any white light showing on the chisels or on the apex of the radius of the v gouge once you accomplish this you take it over to a grinding i'm sorry not a grinding but a, a stiff polishing wheel that a lot of the uh, wood carvers use for uh, you apply rouge on it and you polish your chisels so we'll polish the outside edge of the gouge using the stiff uh, polishing buffing wheel with the light rouge applied to it and at that point uh we're, we're done and it's ready to uh, to test drive it. It's going to be fairly difficult to have a up close view as the sharpening process progresses. I thought I'd show you a few little props here to show you what I will be looking at and what I will be seeing in the sharpening operation. This is the first operation where I've squared it off and it's just 90 degree cut across there the if you want to call it the white line here goes from front to back of the uh, the chisel or the one side of the v gouge after i perform the roughing operation and leave put the 15 or 20 degree bevel that you see on the bottom of the cut and get to the the white line that you see now this is going to be approximately 132nd. This will be what each side of the chisel, uh, the two chisels or the V-gouge will look like after the roughing operation. An intermediate step as I'm, as I'm grinding away, that, that white line that you saw 
in, at the end of the roughing operation has now been reduced and is getting thinner. Again, the whole idea of doing this process with the sanding disc versus doing, the, doing it on uh, any type of stone, I'm in control and I can see what's happening from this bird's eye view. This is exactly what I'll be seeing as I'm grinding. Uh, with the exception of the, I'll also have the, uh, the cutter or the sanding disc in there. So I'll be working it across here at the appropriate angle, watching that white line continually uh, get smaller and smaller as I'm going across here. Uh, you know, if you're stoning and doing this with the stone, you've got to stop, lift it up, look at it, and then hope that when you set the chisel back down, you get to the same angle that you started with. The final result, uh, that white line has completely been eliminated. And if you look straight down, you should not see any uh, any remnants of that white line. It just should it should be gone. And that tells me that I've taken the grinding operation at my selected angle, 15 to 20 degrees, and it has eliminated that white line and looking straight down that tells me that I'm ready for my stropping or polishing operation. Okay I've spray painted the uh, chisel so it will show up a little bit better but believe it or not this is a brand new chisel uh, it's old stock I'm guessing the vintage is probably in the, the mid 60s uh, it appears to be a fairly good quality chisel, but the thing I want to point out here and to demonstrate is not all chisels, of course, they have gotten better over the years. If you buy a new chisel carving tool, it's going to be a whole lot better than this, I hope. What you see here is the red mark at the bottom of the first chisel, right, left-sided chisel, I'm going to call it, the left side of the V-gouge. It's about a 51 degree. This is what we refer to as the heel or the skate. And we shoot for 15 to 20 degrees. We got 51 degrees. Now, as you sharpen your chisels for hardwood, you can increase this angle. But I'm going to tell you right now, this chisel would not cut, it might not even cut hot butter. The other thing I want to point out is the unevenness of the grinds on the right side of the chisel it's a little bit shorter and blunter whereas the left side is, is more shallow as well as uh, tapered back There's, there was obviously very little effort put into this rough grinding of this chisel so what we've got here is a pretty challenging uh, uh, operation and we're going to attempt to uh, to sharpen this thing and make it work. What we're, what we're going to try to do is make that white chisel look more like this. This is a fairly decent uh, V-gouge. It's been sharpened. Uh, let's talk a few minutes about the tools that we'll be using in this process. Some of them you may be familiar with and some of them may be new to you. In the far left is a motorized uh, cordless Dremel tool and uh, it's kind of like a pistol grip tool. It's very light and very very comfortable and very easy to control. The In front of it is a, a motor tool that's run off of a, a power supply. It's got the uh, it will cord on it for the power and it's a lot smoother than your typical Dremel tool. My recommendation if you don't have either one of these two would be possibly get one of the cordless Dremel tools which are smaller, lighter weight and I think uh, for this particular application would, would be more suited than the traditional heavier full size tool that we refer to as, as the Dremel tool. To the right is a punch, and in front of the punch are the two Velcro strips that I've punched out some uh, uh, pieces out of. 
you buy these strips uh i think home depot lows uh, they're they're all they're available just about anywhere the thing about these velcro strips is they have a self-adhesive tape on the back of them so you can just you know punch one out remove the protective uh tape covering and just apply it directly to your your disc so uh with that said before we we look at how we put the disc together let me uh make a suggestion because if you want to try this uh if you like the concept and, and you want to give it a try and you don't have to you don't have to invest too much the, the biggest expense if, uh, would be your motorized tool if you don't have one the second would be the the discs themselves which are relatively cheap a lot cheaper than buying a set of uh hard Arkansas India or water stones. So if you want to give it a try, my suggestion would be to take a, a piece of 1095, a piece of scraper blade, or uh, really doesn't matter what type of metal, but uh, get you a piece of metal that's roughly the same thickness and most of these side thicknesses on the, uh, the V gouges I found somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 thousandths. So get you a 50 or 60 thousand piece of metal stock and practice. And when I'm, I say practice, do the four operations. Take it and face it off to get your get the end of your strip of metal uh, squared and then put your roughing cut where you do your 15, 20 degree cut and leave a 30 second and then take it beyond that until you've eliminated that one thirty second white line and bring it right up to the edge and then polish it and at that point if you've got a good piece of 1095 or a piece of old water or something like that once you go through those operations uh, you know you've really just made a, a chisel and it should cut uh, very effectively uh, with the grain and if it's really keen and properly sharpened you should be able to push that uh, tool across the end grain and it should work just like any other uh, sharp chisel so it, it'll get you uh, rather than jumping right into a, 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 a V gouge that you might possibly uh, mess up the first time around just practice on some, uh, some metal stock uh, getting the feel of the sanding disc and going through the roughing and the finishing process. Now let's talk a little bit about the, uh, uh, the, the wheels. These wheels are referred to for whatever reason and I talked a little bit about this uh, in the video I did on wire inlay. This, these floppy sanding discs, I use them uh, for leveling off the uh, the wire inlay once you've you tapped it into the wood. Uh, here on the on the top right is a piece of uh, uh, cloth back shop roll that's been punched out. It has none of the fuzzy stuff on it. So if you got if you're going to make your disc out of this, you have to apply the fuzzy piece of the Velcro. And I still don't know how, the names for these things. I don't really care. However. Uh, they do make sanding pads for typical sanders that comes with the fuzzy uh, part on it, in this case here the white one, and that will stick to the Velcro. Uh, so that's, a, you know, that's an option there. The uh, wheel here is the floppy that's, that's had the Velcro, uh, the, the crosshatch plastic Velcro applied to it via the sticky tape that comes with the velcro and uh, so to make your sanding disc it's just a matter of, of taking and once you get them punched out center it the best you can press down very hard and now that sanding disc is ready to to go to work uh, if, uh, if you got a gouge that requires a lot of uh, clean up and squared off, uh, you know, there's no, the, the grit that I typically use is 220. But you can, there's nothing to say you can't put a coarser grit on one of these. Uh, my recommendation would be to air and run it a little bit slower. But uh, this is a polishing disc that's had nothing done to it. And this is what I use in, in lieu 
of the uh, slip stone once I'm at the point where I want to go in and, and uh, remove any, any burrs and polish the inside flats of the V-gouge. Uh, this, this little tool works if, if you've got one that's really ragged and needs some cleanup on the inside walls. Uh, get you a hard felt uh, disc. Uh, the same, the same folks, and I'll give you a couple of references at the end of the video. Uh, these all came from Rio Grande, and I can give you a part number for the, uh, they, they refer to them as floppies. They've got a, a, a medium and a coarse, and, and they're just round silicon uh, polishing wheels, but the, the beauty of them is they're flexible. So when you're working these things, you can just walk it back and forth, to me, I have a lot more control doing that than if I'm working the edge of a polishing disc. The, the felt wheel to the left has been, it was flat, it was 90 degrees, and I sculpted it and put a taper on it to match the inside taper of the, uh, the V-gouge. And then I loaded it up with uh, uh, green, real fine rouge. So, the uh, other little trick I'll, I'll point out here is you notice over here on the, uh, on the workbench, I took a protractor uh, and I drew out an angle. This is 17 degrees. All the books say 15 to 20 degrees, so I split the difference. So when you're first starting out, if you're not comfortable knowing that you're approaching that edge to be sanded or ground down at 17 degrees or whatever angle you, you choose, put your little chart like this on a piece of paper or in case my case on top of the bench there and you stand above it and you line your uh, the edge that you're grinding you line it up with the left and then you twist and turn your uh, your motor tool that's got the sanding disc in it to a position to line up with the the right angle and uh, after a while you, you'll get a you'll develop a feel for what 17 degrees is or what 15 degrees is etc you know we're not talking uh, rocket scientists here but that'll that'll get you in the ballpark if you've never really thought about how much is 17 degrees or how much is 20 degrees so that's kind of a recap of the, the tools that I use in this process in lieu of a, a, a stone. And again, I'll, I'll post the, uh, the part numbers and, the, and some references for where you can get these little uh, uh, floppy silicon polisher discs. The rest of the stuff, you know, is, is uh, Walmart, Home Depot type stuff, the Velcro, the, uh, uh, the, the dribble tools, like I said, I, I would kind of I would kind of recommend using a lighter weight to the cordless one, but uh, don't don't forget to uh, get you a piece of fifty thousandths uh, metal and just practice on it a little bit before you jump in and start, uh, you know, removing chips on a on a good gouge. Or of course, if it's like most of them I had, they like the white one we started out with. Uh, there's it's not a lot of damage you could do. Okay, at this point we have uh, ended the squaring off of the nose and getting it 90 degrees to the shank. And also I have ground the 15 to 20 degree uh, heel, or what's going to be eventually formed to the heel. So the next thing we're going to do is, is rough grind the, uh, or shape the two side chisels. Okay, here's a, a closer look at the, uh, the end of the 
roughing or shaping operation. We've got the, uh, the two side chisels defined, brought them up to uh, roughly a 30, 30 second of an inch and we've preformed the 15, 20 degree uh, what's going to become the heel. So this completes the, uh, the shaping or roughing operation. The next thing we're going to do is go in here and on the two side chisels we're going to try to take these two white lines and grind them down so that they completely are eliminated and go to the back side of the inside of the the v-gouge and uh, then we're going to grind the apex or the heel and the way we approach that because of the inside geometry of a v-gouge where the two side chisels actually come together if you look real close you'll see that there's a small radius there so what we're going to do at the 15 20 degree angle of the heel we're going to grind that just like it was a, a miniature uh, gouge so we'll put it down we'll bring the sanding this up to the to the bottom of it and just roll it around and rock it around to try to match the outside of the heel to the inside profile of that small radius and at the same time trying to focus on keeping that heel as narrow as possible and as straight as possible the roughed out portion that you're looking at right now uh, flares out like a pyramid what we'd like to do is have that heel or that skate as narrow and as straight running down the center line as we can so I'm going to go and uh, do the finished grinding and then we'll come back and take a look at it after the finished grinding is complete. Having completed the finishing sanding or grinding operation, we've eliminated the white lines associated with the two chisel segments of the V-gouge and, and tuned up the, uh, the skate uh, to narrow it down. If you were going through this operation using stones, your next operation, you would take a slip stone and go inside of the V-gouge to remove any burrs and to you know to polish the flat inside areas of of the two cutting sides what we're going to do using the rotary tool that we've been using we have a disc here that's a, a silicon polishing disc we're going to go in inside the groove very lightly on the side walls and, and polish or remove any burrs that were form from the finishing sanding of the two chisels. At the same time, we're going to pay focus and pay attention to this bottom radius in here, and we can actually sculpt and sand this silicon uh, pad to fit that radius and that profile, and very lightly just go in there and touch it up, make sure there's no, no burrs at the apex or the radius at the start of the, uh, the V-gouge point there. And uh, again, we'll do it with this silicon uh, polishing pad, and then we'll take it over to the uh, polishing wheel where I have a very hard uh, polishing disc on it, and it's got a little rouge, and we will polish the outside of the cutter. And then at that time, we'll, we'll take, a, take it for a test drive. So let's go put the silicon wheel in there and, and dust off and, and remove any burrs on the two inside chisels. Okay, we've got the silicon polishing wheel installed, so let's go in and 
and uh, hit the inside flaps here. A piece of sandpaper. I'm going to put a slight radius on the edge of this silicon polishing pad. So when I drop it down inside of the V-gouge, right at the apex, it should match the radius of the uh, tool. So basically these two operations, dusting off the, uh, the flats and hitting the little point at the bottom, the apex, is analogous to if you were using a stone, this is what this would be the operation that your your slip stone would perform. So now I'm going to take it over to the uh, the polishing wheel and polish the outside and then we'll give it a test drive. True test on, on a V gouge is to look at your cuts on a soft wood. This is a piece of basswood. And use a soft wood and go across the grain and uh, looking down into the bottom of the V gouge or the V channel at the two is going to generate when you go across the grain there should be no tear out of the grain so not only that uh, it should cut relatively free and easy along with the grain so let's give it a little drive here and see what happens first we'll take it down the length and that's always a good sign when you see that shaving rolling out like that I'm gonna lighten up and take a lot a less cut you can tell now I'm going to go with a deeper cut. It appears to be cutting extremely well. To cut across the grain, and check for tear out. You know, another way to do it is, is start off, start off going straight with the grain, and roll it around, and come out the end. You notice that the shavings never stop. Here I'm going with the grain, and here I'm going across the grain. If I just go straight cuts, side by side, across the grain, it's a cutting extremely well. And looking down in the channels in the bottom, they're just as crisp and sharp as your cuts that you're taking with the grain. So it looks like I have just acquired a new tool in my arsenal. For years it was unusable, but we've we've been able to salvage it. A little cl close up of the uh, the finished uh, sharpening job here. The uh, you can see the polish it uh, was put on by the the hard buffing wheel, and shot of the inside, and. Uh, So let's look. Let's take a close-up look at the cuts that we made. The uh, these were the, the cross-grain cuts here. As we went across the grain, this is where we made the transition from straight to cross-grain. Then later, I, I did a a cross-hatch pattern. And usually, if you're going to have some problems, uh, it's going to show up going across the grain. But this is also a, a pretty, uh, pretty effective test if you can make grooves uh, in one, one direction and cross them and still get a crisp, clean cut out as it's making a transition from the humps and the hills. So we'll wrap this up in just a second. With that, we're going to call it a wrap for today. I'd like to thank everybody for watching, and if you uh, <coughs> like it, give us a thumbs up. Uh, any comments, suggestions are welcome. And by the way, if you've got some wood carving buddies or some woodworking friends, uh, share it with them and uh, let's try to get, uh, get this information disseminated as much as we can. Speaking of that, uh, we're looking at a picture of a miniature plane that I made uh, several years ago. It's called the MB Tidy Patton. And I see two videos in this uh, plane. Uh, there's a potential for a a video on how to make hinges and some of the custom tooling and fixtures that I had to make for making uh, custom hinges as well as uh, a fixture in a box that I made for making wooden threads. The wooden threads uh, video would, would range from 
three sixteenths uh, right hand left hand wooden threads up to uh, I don't know inch inch and a half whatever there's a couple of different ways uh, to approach it but uh, give me your thoughts and your comments uh, kind of give me a little direction on my, my next video do we want to maybe look at how to make hinges or how to make wooden screw threads uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time